This is Industry Wednesday. Every Wednesday, we analyze a different industry. Today, we're looking at 15 things you didn't know about running a shipping business. Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get informed. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome back to our channel. We're glad to have you here with us today since we're talking about one industry that benefits us all, the shipping industry. There's nothing more exciting than ordering something online and waiting for it to be delivered. And although the wait can sometimes be annoyingly long and problematic, the happiness you feel after seeing your parcel, it's like Christmas morning. Delivery guys must feel like Santa's little helpers all day, every day. But shipping is not only your delivery guy or the postal service. In order for your smartphone to arrive at your doorstep, it needs to be manufactured, possibly shipped by sea from China, stored in a warehouse, and then moved to your household delivery service and then onto your door. It's a long process and multiple players are involved. Shipping can be done by air with planes, by sea with large cargo ships, by car or trucks, and then smaller vehicles. This industry puts the world's wheels into motion, and it makes a lot of things possible. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. With all that said, let's see how it all began. What's trending nowadays? What it's like to work in this worldwide industry? And who makes the most money out of it? Sit back and relax, because you're watching the 15 things you didn't know about the shipping industry. No shipping fees required for these facts. Number 1. If you want to expand, you'll need permits and licenses. If you think that shipping is an easy job, think again. It's more than just handling a few parcels from the warehouses to someone's door. It's management, taxes, laws, complaints, contracts, lobby, and a lot of stress. Cargo shipping involves risks for ships that could sink, planes that could crash, and cars that can break the packages. So where's this silver lining? Companies can specialize in shipping certain products, like guns, medicine, fuel, chemicals, or waste. They do need special permits and licenses to do that, but at least you know your ASOS order is not staying close to radioactive waste. If you want to join the industry, jumping in on a niche can be better than general shipping, where competition is steep. Number 2. Having a good location helps with parking, employees, and depositing. Okay, so you're a shipping company. What do you need to make the whole process easier for everyone? There are business models you can copy, but not everyone's the same, and you might consider customizing your needs. A few basic things you need to take into consideration are having a good location so your employees can reach it easily. Have a big space or wide warehouse where you can store and label all packages. Have a good system so that employees know where to find things and how to handle them. And have a good parking lot so that drivers can leave the cars at night in a safe place. Yep, sounds like common sense, but not every shipping company thinks of these things. Number 3. Drop shipping can be a good alternative if you want a piece of the shipping pie. Nowadays, drop shipping is a buzzword we constantly hear. It seems like everyone is doing it, and there's good money in it if you do it right. But what is drop shipping? Drop shipping is a supply chain management method in which the retailer you buy from does not keep the goods in stock, but instead transfers the customer orders and shipment details to either the manufacturer or another retailer, who then ships the goods directly to the customer. This is a great idea and business model, but also has some downsides. If you order 10 different items and they're not all in stock, they might come in separate parcels and different days, and not all customers are happy with that. However, what is great about the business model is shops don't have to worry about keeping things in stock. Number 4. It's a very conservative industry to work in. Shipping is as old as commerce. Ancient people used to trade metals and food to ship them to other places. This is how diamonds, flowers, and different vegetables or fruits arrived in Europe. Nowadays, people still do that. We ship bananas all over the world, metals, fuel, and pretty much everything people need from clothing to food to animals. What most people don't know is that shipping is quite a conservative industry. There are few stakeholders that run the business and have a strong reputation, and if they don't agree with something, no one will. 
Every company has its own set of rules. They don't share tips or advice, and if you want to do things differently, you'll be faced with hate and stiff managers that do not want to embrace change. Number 5. AP Muller Maersk is the largest shipping company. Every business has its king. In the shipping industry, that king is AP Muller Maersk, a Danish company established in 1904. They manage activities in the transport, logistics, and energy sectors, making more than $35 billion every year. They describe themselves as the world's largest overseas cargo carrier that operates over 600 vessels with 3.8 million 20-foot equivalent unit, or TEU, container capacity, which is huge. The company has been inherited from father to son throughout the years and has expanded very much, benefiting now from access to all major ports and independent terminals. Number 6. You can choose to lease almost everything if you don't have the money to buy it. If we're talking about cargo ships, let's go a little deeper into it. If you do this kind of shipping, you'll need a few ships, a crew to sail them, port permits and licenses, heavy-duty machines to operate containers, and some money for maintenance. But where do you find a ship? How much does it cost? Well, all of these details are not that easy to get. That's where freight brokers step in to help. They can help you buy or lease anything. The beauty of the modern world is that you can lease everything if you don't have the money to buy it. However, this is an option a few companies go to, but it's not the most profitable one. Once you own something, then you can start making money without worrying about interest rates or damaging something that's not yours. Number 7. Big shipping names like Alibaba or Amazon have brought their shipping strategies close to perfection. We've all heard about Amazon or Alibaba. Everyone talks about them. We also have videos about them on our channel, so you can check them out. These two giants have mastered the online shopping and shipping business to perfection. They have huge warehouses, thousands of employees, billions of products, and nine-figure revenues. Amazon now has Amazon Prime delivery system, Alibaba has the Engross, an overseas shipping option, and we'll soon enjoy the drone shipping method from one of them. With great return policies, 24-7 customer service, and fast delivery, they manage to rule over household goods and be the main players in their category. Number 8. Your shipment strategy affects your brand and sales. As an online shop or any kind of shop that also delivers, you need to really consider this last step of the purchase. The way you handle this whole process says a lot about your brand and your attention to details. From stocks to shipping fees and checkout to the delivery company you choose to work with, it all matters to your customer. You might not have full control over all of the steps in the beginning, but you should. Working closely with shipping companies in order to offer free or cheaper shipping can bring in more clients, and also shipping worldwide is a huge plus that can boost your sales. This strategy is even more important if you sell sensitive or fragile goods, and this applies to both retailers and shipping companies. Number 9. You'll need a bit of political influence and money to secure contracts. So, you started your shipping company. Let's say your name is ShipAway. Now you need clients and some contracts, so you start delivering parcels. But where can you find these clients? Well, you can hire some people to do it for you, or you can go out there and figure it out yourself. This is why business is hard. Another way to secure clients and contracts is by having political influence. Senators handle some big contracts, and they can squeeze you in and make big money. They also have their own businesses and maybe could use another contractor. Also, having a friend that works in the government can help you if you have any problems, need permits, or a new law. Political connections help you a lot. You only need to secure a few of them. Worry more about buying politicians rather than anything else. Number 10. Two of the richest men in the world are in the shipping industry. On this channel, we talk about rich people a lot, and we know you like to know more about them, too. You'll be pleased to know that today we're talking about two of the richest men in the world, and they're also involved in shipping, Jeff Bezos and Jack Ma, with Jeff being the richest and Ma being the 20th richest. They run the biggest e-commerce websites in the world, and they're not going to trip over shipping. 
Alibaba has already started to lease its own ships to have more control over containers and delivery time. Some business analysts say that these two giants will disrupt the shipping industry in a few years and change the way we think about and see shipping. Now, Alexers, if you want to learn some more about these two billionaires, check out our 15 Things You Didn't Know About Jack Ma and 15 Things You Didn't Know About Jeff Bezos videos. Number 11. Having great insurance is vital for your business. Have you ever received a broken item? Or has your shipping been delayed? Or maybe the parcel never arrived? It's not your fault, of course, but who's to blame for it? The retailer or the shipping company? Well, it depends. It's an unfortunate situation, but it's bound to happen from time to time. You send the product back and get your money. But what if something happens to the delivery truck, or the ship, or the plane? What then? This is the case for good insurance. Nobody wants to pay for something that happened because of an accident, so that's why you need insurance. Having insurance for your shipping equipment may be expensive, but it will save you a lot of unplanned expenses and court matters. Number 12. Cargo ships are rarely inspected, so drugs can be smuggled within the boxes or ships. You might have seen cruise ships, ferries, yachts, and all sorts of boats in your life. Some movies portrayed cargo ships very differently but close to reality. They are huge, with few crew members, and often not like other ships you've ever seen in your life. Their only purpose is to carry the containers from one point to another safely and with little to no delays. This can happen if customs inspections take little time or no time. Some cargo ships never get inspected, and this is the loophole of which smugglers can take advantage and ship drugs. Only 5% of containers shipped to the U.S. ports are physically inspected, and that number is even lower in Europe, which leaves a lot of room for smugglers bringing in contraband items. Number 13. It's a male-dominated industry. It's a well-known fact that women don't have as many jobs as men do when it comes to management positions, and oftentimes they're paid less. In most cases, this is viewed as gender discrimination. If you're a woman and plan to get a job in the shipping industry, be prepared for some serious discrimination because mostly men are working there. There are a few women that do back office jobs, marketing or human resources, but most of the shipping chain is ruled by men. A poll of 40 companies within the sector revealed that less than 1% had female representatives in executive positions. This shows that shipping is not ready to make a change and give women a chance, so keep that in mind when you seek a job listing in the shipping industry. Number 14. It's actually not the most polluting industry we have out there. Unfortunately, everything humans do is polluting the earth in one way or another. We've come so far with technology and evolution, but we might have done irreversible damage. Climate change is real, and that's because of polluting industries, cars, and excessive farming. So where does shipping stand in this hierarchy? Most shipping is done by cargo ships, and only after that by cars. Ships don't pollute as much, but cars do, and so do planes. So even though the shipping industry pollutes a lot, it's not the same or as damaging as the textile or oil industries. In fact, it's only ranking in sixth place, which is not great, but it has potential to reduce its carbon footprint. Number 15. Cargo ships can meet with water pirates in some areas. Pirates are oftentimes portrayed in cartoons and some great movies, and nowadays every three-year-old wants to be a pirate. For them, this involves sailing for months, fighting bad guys or monarchs, and getting their hands on big treasures. Unfortunately, that's all fiction in Hollywood. Real pirates do exist, like off the coast of Somalia and in the Indian Ocean, and they actually rob and sink cargo ships. There's nothing exciting about them and the amount of loss they bring to shipping companies is huge. Since cargo shipping is the most important step in the whole process, the crew and companies that own the ships are often at high risk when sailing these waters. As cool as it sounds, they're actually criminals. And that's it for today, Alexers. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's always a pleasure to deliver these facts to you. Now, we're curious. How do you feel when you receive a parcel? And which delivery company is your favorite? And for those of you who stuck with us all the way to the end for being a true Alexer, of course you get a bonus fact. 
Number 16. This industry is highly dependent on the global economy and population. The modern world has created the need for certain industries such as oil, textiles, food or pharmaceuticals. All these needs need to be shipped worldwide, and here is where the codependency enters. As the need for textile, food, and medicine grows, shipping needs need to fulfill and make sure it's distributed where needed. As the Earth's population grows, and so does the economy, the shipping industry can still make money. If something were to happen, such as a financial crisis or a natural disaster, shipping also suffers. That's why only a few companies have survived over time, because they manage to get through the hard times and make the best out of the best times. It's tough out there, especially now when the economy is so unpredictable. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.